travel to escape life. We travel so life doesn't escape us. And it's long past time we got back out there. So where to? Dulles International Airport. Let your imagination soar. Book now at flydullis.com slash nonstop. For me, Missouri State is where it all started. I came here with dreams. You probably did too, or you probably will. This place, these people, faculty, staff, and the friends I made along the way helped me get there and reach my wildest dreams. This is the right place, and this is the right time to make your Missouri State This is Ralph Rindler, director of the Smithsonian Bicentennial Folklife Festival. If you enjoyed the festival, you'll be interested in this invitation. Ladies and gentlemen, an opportunity like this cannot be taken for granted. This evening, we are going to be beating our hearts out for you all, so I want to see people enjoying themselves. So get up and feel the music and do something about it, okay? is a right of cultural democracy. We have many, many partners, you included. I encourage you to stand alongside with us as we travel this journey year after year. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Smithsonian Folklife Festival here in 2023. And uh, we're glad to see you. Hope you all are staying hydrated and taking care of yourselves during this hot weather. We uh, are ostensibly here to represent some Ozarks fiddling for you. And uh, always happy to do that. We like to say in Missouri, it's, a, it's the most economical form of entertainment you'll ever find and uh, playing for dances, playing around the communities and the schoolhouses and the churches and what have you. And joining me here on stage currently, we've got uh, a really fine fiddler from Arkansas by the name of Roy Pilgrim. He's with a group called the Ozark Highballers. 
and they'll be playing also the, at the uh, square dance today. And next to him is this beautiful redhead, also from the state of Arkansas, Stone County, Arkansas. She's a big uh, mover and shaker here for the festival, helping get people together, and uh, she's also a fiddler, rich in the tradition of Arkansas, fiddling and ballad singing and, uh, oh gosh, a whole lot of things. That's Rachel Reynolds. And uh, I'm Chris Brashear. I'm, I'm uh, from Ozark, Missouri, so they figured I needed to be here because I'm from Ozark. And <laughs> but I'm a, I'm a fiddler and guitar man and a ballad singer as well. Uh, but since I get to be the presenter, uh, I'm going to get to be able to put the first person on the hot seat here. And I'm going to start with you, Rachel, to tell them a little bit about Arkansas Stone County Fiddling. Well, all right. Um, How's everybody doing? So, uh, yeah, there's so many styles of uh, fiddle music across the Ozarks. Uh, I grew up, I started playing fiddle when I was seven, and uh, they're in, in Mountain View in Stone County, Arkansas. They say it is the quote unquote folk music capital of the world. Yeah. And that's a bold statement. Um, but there's, uh, there's a whole bunch of musicians here from Stone County, but uh, I was lucky. I went home one day and uh, told my mom I wanted to play fiddle. And she played about 15 different instruments, but she didn't play the fiddle. So she went that day and she got both of us a fiddle. And we kind of learned together. And uh, kind of the scene in Mountain View at the time, it's a little bit different now, although you can still go there and play music on the square, but at the time, uh, there would be what we call picking circles. That's why there's a picking parlor stage down there, but that's just when you can all get together in a circle and swap tunes. And the uh, town square there in Mountain View uh, was kind of known for having those picking circles go on, mostly on the weekends, but there might be 20 picking circles going on. and. Uh, my mom and I would stay out there till about three in the morning. And there were all kinds of uh, pickers out there, but especially fiddlers. And so uh, I got, got to learn uh, firsthand from a, a bunch of fiddlers in Arkansas. And also going to the Ozark Folk Center, I played there, uh, which is a state park dedicated to preserving Ozark culture and sharing it. And, and got to hang out with a bunch of uh, fiddlers there that uh, were more than happy to share what they knew with me. Um, but I went off and did all these things and I ended up in the southern part of Missouri in the Ozarks and got to study especially with an uh, old time fiddler that was really wonderful. He's passed now. His name was Cliff Bryant. And he had a distinct style that was called Missouri Shortbow um, which is a a reference to how you bow, and he had a really neat repertoire. Some things that I had learned from Arkansas fiddlers when I was a kid, but a different style, and other things that were a completely new repertoire. And I'm also a folklorist, so I was especially interested in hearing all of the fiddlers and all their tunes and all their styles and what those kind of crossovers are. And I think it's real interesting. Um, I know we're going to get to play a little bit, and you can hear some of the, some of the uh, different styles. But Roy's got a real good handle, too, because he has, Roy, yep, he, uh, he's played and dug in archives of Arkansas material and Missouri material and learned firsthand. Um, so, Roy, why don't you tell them a little bit about your background playing? Yeah. Well, so I was raised near Fayetteville, Arkansas, and uh, I was really lucky. Uh, I grew up on what was left of my grandparents' farm. That it uh, it had kind of got willed down over the over the generations. But my my dad had built some rent houses uh, on the farm there, and uh, and so we had some neighbors that lived in the some of the rent houses there on on. The family land, and uh, some of my neighbors were were musicians, and um, 
kind of bluegrass players, you know, played banjo and fiddle and, and guitar. And so when I was a, a really little kid, I was, I was really lucky to uh, get exposed to that. My dad had a, a little shop that he'd work on his equipment, you know, his tractor and his pickup truck and stuff. He had a little shop. And there was an upstairs room above the shop that was just kind of left vacant. And every Wednesday night when I was a kid, they'd get together and, and play music up there uh, above my dad's shop. And they called it the shop top. And, <laughs> and uh, anyway, so that kind of got me started in it. And um, I played a little banjo and guitar and mandolin and stuff. And then when I was, uh, I think about 17, I went to a square dance at Matt Cartier's house, Matt Cartier and Gretchen Schlump. Uh, were married at the time, but since divorced, but they, they lived together there in South Fayetteville and had a, uh, had really wonderful square dance parties there, and uh, I got to go to a few of those when I was in my teens, and I heard Pete Howard playing the fiddle there and really just thought, yeah, that's what I'd like to, to learn to do, you know, and, and uh, so I, I learned a lot from Pete. He was definitely my, my main mentor, uh, learning to play the fiddle, and so yeah, that's kind of how I got into it, and I've just always I, I like I like the music. You know, it's it's pretty good sounding music to me, but it but it's also I, I always liked the function that it filled. You know, I if you take the music too far away from the dancing, you know, it's uh, to me it kind of loses its savor a little bit. You know, I really like I like the function that it fills. You know, I've actually in that same room that they used to get together and play in the shop top there by my dad's shop. We for about five years, we organized a square dance, and it was just a real low-key type of square dance, kind of a potluck, really more of a party, and then there'd be square dancing there. And, and I can't tell you how many people met there and fell in love and got married and had kids, and, you know, it's, it served its function. You know, and about the time most of the people that would come to the dance got married and had kids, well, the dance pretty well petered out, you know. <laughs> and so, you know, every generation's kind of got to build that again because... You know, it's it didn't serve its purpose, but um, should we do a little fit? Yeah, Roy, I think we're gonna need to do a little filling. Oh, but yeah. before we do that, we gotta say that we have another addition to our fine crew here, and that's Grace Stormont playing fiddle down there. She'll we'll be uh, talking to her in a little bit. But first, we're gonna have Roy fiddle us up a tune. Can I suggest one, Roy? If I know it. <laughs> uh, you played that. I call it KC Rag, but you call it yeah. something else. Yeah, let's play that. That's a good tune. This is. Uh, this is a fiddle tune. So, you know, this is old music and, and, and sometimes it gets problematic. This tune had a, a problematic title that, that I don't like to say and so then you kind of get the fun of renaming them. But, uh, you know, it's a, it's a good fiddle tune so we, we renamed it and we, play it, we keep playing it. But uh, it's, uh, there's a couple different names for it. We call it Mossy Bill, he calls it KC Rag and it's something like this here. That's what she came for right there. <laughs> well, Grace, are you ready? Yeah, I guess. Tell them, tell them a little bit about yourself, where you're from, where you're living, 
how you got to fiddling. All right. Uh, well, my name is Grace Stormont. I'm from uh, originally like around Heber Springs, Arkansas. There's a lake there um, called Greer's Ferry. Uh, and uh, I moved up to Mountain View when I was like 15. Um, and uh, that's where I met uh, a lot of my folk center people. And I worked at the folk center for a long time. And that's where I learned how to play banjo, fiddle, and all of the folk instruments. Um, before that, I just played guitar and sang a little bit. But uh, so I grew up listening to fiddlers like uh, Emmett Lundy, Albert Hash, things like that. Uh, a lot of old recordings and also fiddlers around town like Shay Poole, um, I don't know, Eden. Eden Pool's a good one too. Uh, there's Eden quite a few good fiddlers in town. Well. Yeah, everyone fiddles. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I guess that's basically it. Have you got a tune for us? Sure, let's see. Do if I'm wanna, in tune. The heat's wanna, messing with it. But. A backup guitarist or do you just sure. want uh, put it out there? I think I'm in A if you want to back me up. All right, I'll, I'll Try to do that and try to stay out of your way as much as possible. There's nothing like learning a new tune on stage at the Smithsonian Folk Festival. Hats off to Chris Brashears for doing it. That's a, that's a skill right there. Actually, I'll be in D. I changed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I just got to keep you on your toes, Chris. The plot thickens. <laughs> Does this tune have a name, Grace? Uh, Julianne Johnson. It's okay. one of my favorites. Thank you, Grace. Thank you. That sounded great. Thank you. I just put the old Missouri back up to it, is what I did. <laughs> sounded good. Sounded great. You can't go wrong. They talk about the Missouri backups where you put the four chord at the end of the song, just whether the tune goes there or not. <laughs> anyway, let's see. Rachel, by gosh, let's hear you fiddle up something. Well, I was thinking about uh, another, another uh, side of that Ozark backup spectrum. Of, I remember old boy coming up to me and he's like, I like that tune, it just has one chord. <laughs> Makes it real easy if they just play. I thought we might uh, play one together because cause harmony is a, is a thing that happens in Ozark fiddles, especially around uh, waltzes. I was thinking about maybe playing uh, my own house waltz. Y'all know that one? I don't know that one. How about yeah. Westphalia? You know what's failure? He might. I do. <laughs> hey, perfect. You're on. Man. Okay. Good. Sweet, switch spots. I'll play guitar. You sit over there. Well, sure. 
We're going to swap around. We're playing musical chairs. <laughs> Do I have the same A as your A and the same D as your D? Talk to him and I'll tune up here. I was gonna, I was, I said I know the West Bay. Oh, okay. <laughs> I love that West Valley Waltz. That's a good We're going to play the West Valley Waltz, I I'll believe. Tell you, so, West Valley Waltz is what we're going to play. And I don't know that I uh, ever heard a, a waltz as much as that one get played across state lines. And also, it's one of those that uh, once it gets thrown in a, in a picking circle, that's when all the harmonies come out. Usually, we play uh, in unison. We might have a different <clears throat> style on the tune because we learned it from a different person. Or I was saying earlier that I had worked uh, with an older fiddler named Cliff Bryan for a long time, and it didn't matter if I learned a song when I was eight years old. Uh, if I didn't play his version of it, I was in trouble. <laughs> there, mm -hmm. there was a, but in a picking circle, uh, you know, we might have different versions or styles, but somebody's always going to jump in on Arkansas Traveler or something like that. But waltzes is usually when the harmonies come out. And this, I've, I've had the honor a couple of times of judging, uh, being a judge at the Arkansas State Fiddlers Contest. I could never win it, so I decided to judge it instead. But, um, but uh, you'll never hear one waltz played so many times in one day as uh, the Arkansas State Championship Fiddle Contest. <laughs> It's a really popular one there.
Thank you, Rachel. Thank you. That's always a fine number. So, uh, Roy, let's let's uh, let's get back in our other positions and uh, let's let's all play fiddle on this one. And uh, I do think we ought to play one tune we all know together. And I think Arkansas Traveler is a darn good one. That seems right. That seems right. <laughs> Yeah. I try to keep them entertained on stage, Roy. You know yeah, that. That was some fancy moving <laughs> there. Are y'all enjoying this so far? It's really, really nice to have dancers. That always makes you want to fiddle even more, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It just keeps us going. And uh, we're going to play the Arkansas Traveler. I mean, that's a tune that every fiddler in this country probably knows. But it is... Uh, you can't get more Ozarks than the Arkansas Traveler, I don't think. And it's something we all know, and uh, it's a great square dance tune. And uh, so we're just going to, again, just try to fiddle up a storm here for us. It's in, for, it's in the key of D for all you all, all taking notes. I don't believe I've ever heard the Arkansas Traveler not played in the key of D. I suppose it could happen, but... Roy, you want to kick us off there? Arkansas Traveler. Well, that was fun, guys. Yeah. Well, let's see here. I guess I ought to tell you a little bit more about Missouri fiddling on the Missouri side of the Ozarks. I did grow up in the town of Ozark, Missouri, and uh, when I was a kid growing up, uh, Ozark was the count is is the county seat of Christian County, just uh, south of Springfield. And when and uh, so on the town square, uh, a couple things. There was there was a uh, little place, uh, well, popularly known as the shack. <laughs> when I was growing up, uh, it was they in the papers they'd call it the Ozark Opry, but it was uh, it was just a little corner building on the town square where the Emanuel Woods family held forth every Saturday night playing tunes. Emanuel's uh, was uh, had a pretty good repertoire of tunes and a. Uh, Fine old time fiddler, grew up uh, actually south of Ozark in a log cabin, and uh, got to know his family. And actually, I think uh, his grandson uh, is maybe here today. Nelson Hermilla maybe is is here. I hope, hope if you're here, Nelson, hope to see you. Anyway, um, so Emmanuel was was the fiddler that, that I'd always see. But also from Springfield was Art Galbraith, who is uh, some of you know also became a pretty well known Ozark's fiddler. Um, and, and Art was commonly there at the at the shack, and uh, and among the Ozark fiddlers, I think of you know Art probably got as much name as anyone because he got a couple records on Rounder Records, <laughs> and uh, so his repertoire got uh, widely distributed here at least in my lifetime. So let's see, that's uh, but I learned fiddling pretty early on, although uh, I started out kind of as a banjo player, 
And, uh, but anyway, it, it certainly represented me what community about, you know, the musical community that's, uh, what I always re really wanted to be a part of. Um, it kind of welcomed everybody, people danced, people played, and uh, it was, uh, well, I, I might have been the younger kid in the audience, or, you know, going down there on a Saturday night. The rest of people my age, if they were a driving age, they were circling the square. <laughs> <laughs> And I always thought that was pretty silly, so I'd, I'd rather pick, you know. So anyway, uh, there's a, uh, there are lots of fiddlers we may mention. And I think the one thing I learned from growing up there, too, with those two particular fiddlers is how you could have two people from the same place, essentially, had a little bit different repertoire and had a completely different way of, way of playing. And, uh, but that's just the way, you know, I, I feel about music and singing and everything. Everybody's got their own voice and everybody has their own way of going about the instrument. And, uh, but, you know, we, we may share a common repertoire, but we can all sound pretty different sometimes. Yeah. So, uh, Grace, I want to hear you play again here. Right. You got one for us? Yeah, let me, I'm going to cross tune, actually, which is something I don't see a lot in Missouri. I don't know. Why is that? Why don't people cross well, tune? Well, uh, they, they do, and they will, and I can <laughs> prove it. That's good. But, yeah, I mean, Lonnie <laughs> Robertson, he, uh, he played like Lonesome Polly Ann and cross tune, and uh, there, was, there's, there definitely is, is uh, some folks that did cross tune. Uh, I always felt like that uh, A, E, A, uh, C sharp tuning is not uncommon. Yeah, and, Calico? Mm -hmm. That's a cool one. I'm just doing regular A E A E here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll try not to get too technical here, but uh, y'all <laughs> y'all wanna play it? Y'all know Old Yeller Dog? You just said it. Okay. This one's called Old Yeller Dog. I want to take just a minute also to recognize the staff here at the Smithsonian Folklife Festival, the sound crew, Sissy, and all the folks working back behind the scenes here, doing the live video stream, working on the audio, and uh, they, they really work hard and uh, they really take it to heart, all of it. So uh, Roy, what you got up your sleeve there? You know, Chris, we hadn't heard you lead one yet. All right, well. well. Why, don't you, why don't you play us one? All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna cheat here a little bit just because I'm 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 the presenter. I can I can decide something a little. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little tune I came up with. Uh, it's called One for Possum. I thought it was good Ozark name, but it's actually to be to completely honest with you, I, I actually named it for a fiddling friend of mine by the name of Charlie Walden, who's one of America's great fiddlers, and he is called the Possum. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, this is just a so so not George Jones. No, it's not. It's no, not George. It's, the possum. it's not named not, not named for George. But uh, anyway, this is this is called one for possum. Thank you. 
Chris, that sounded like a fully original tune there. Uh, a lot of times in the Ozarks, you run across folks that uh, have written a fiddle tune, and really it's the first part of one and the second part of the other. And then you put it together, and then you call it something in the something. And you fill in those holes, and <laughs> it's pretty. Format. It's the perfect format. It's a formula, but, but that sounded fully original. <laughs> Yeah, that was well, beautiful. That was really it a nice was really tune. beautiful. I, I did, I did come up with it somehow in some form or fashion. But you know, what did Pete Seeger say? Plagiarism is basic to all culture, or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Yeah. How about you, Rachel? What do you got for us? Well, I, I'm really into the idea of us all playing together, and uh, so I thought about leather bridges. Yeah. Yeah. Ginji. Yeah. Sissy, we got time for one more. Is that about right? Okay, this, this will be our last one here. We want to thank you for coming out to the Smithsonian Folklife Festival. And uh, I want to thank all the folks up here on stage with me, Grace Stormont, and down there on the end, and, and uh, Roy Pilgrim, Rachel Reynolds, and I'm Chris Brashear, and we'll see you around the festival. There's square dance tonight. Thanks everybody so much. After the evening concert, there's a square dance right here. It'll be great, and we hope to see you back here. What key are we in here? G. Thanks everybody for Thank coming you. out. You all have a big time. <laughs>